Hospital chaplain cares for the patients and staff at the hospital. That is the smallest nutshell. Maybe a walk-in from bath or a trauma, and we are able to provide emotional and spiritual care. Worship, visitation, rites and sacraments, some religious education, lots of pastoral counseling. Uh, there's a good deal of anxiety, fear, uh, anger. People are dealing with all those emotions. We meet the critical patients in the trauma bay. We also care for their unit members who are obviously going to be upset about the fact that they've had these casualties and fatalities. And they need a safe place to talk about those feelings. They need someone to put a hand on their shoulder in a non-judgmental way. Um, I do have the eyes and ears of most of the staff here most of the enlisted staff. I have the perspective of the first sergeant and the command chief here. Um, but we all are a team in caring and nurturing for the living and uh, you know, preparing a way for those that die. We help the um, commander or whoever the senior person is that's with them from their unit, let the survivors know when there's been deaths in the unit. We sometimes talk to their families. Um, we sometimes help the ambulatory patients visit the critical patients when they come out of the OR and we care for all the staff that have cared for them. And I can say from experience, I, if you walk by the chaplain's office you see hospital personnel in there, in their office a lot, but you also see the chaplain down here. I mean, they've come down several times asking us, you know, do we need prayer? Is there anything they could do for us? Even if we don't worship with them at their Sunday services, they become our friends and they know almost everybody by name in the med group. So I know that they're there. Um, does it make me feel better? Absolutely. It's easy to get stressed out in a, a constant day in, day out uh, tempo that we have. Um, so you have to take that second, that, that breath. If I had a rough day and spoken with a chaplain, I'm not embarrassed to say, yes, I've walked down because I come from a religious background, a Protestant background, and I went down there and I was able to go because it was not something I wanted to talk with my colleagues about. They were busy. Um, I couldn't talk to my family at the time. Uh, it was kind of an isolating situation. I was able to sit down with the chaplain, an open door. Just you're able to vent, but it was great. So I've experienced it firsthand. It's wonderful to have the chaplain there, absolutely. Well, I like to think of it in terms of what I do as a, as a ministry of presence. If they're unconscious or if they're intubated, the doctors have told us that they still may have the sense of hearing and so I'm always aware of wanting to come close to them, maybe speak to them, let them know that I'm here. You know the other day we had a patient who was just had devastating injuries and because his blood pressure had dropped so dangerously low they had to pull back the sedation so he was conscious as all of these doctors and nurses and techs were talking about him. Um, and the medical folks cannot take time away from life-saving procedures. But our job, we're set aside to love them. And so I was able to go and, you know, look into his eyes and stroke his forehead while they were saying these things and say, the doctors are talking about what you need so that you can, you know, heal, so that you can get well. When the chaplain comes up to the bedside, you just see the, the furrowed brow disappear. And you can see sometimes a smile light up on their faces. If you happen to see somebody who clicks religiously with the chaplain who's very religious and you got a religious chaplain of that same denomination, boom. And there's times when the patients are very upset because you're fresh from an injury. And there's times they've had some moments to think about their injuries or their illness. And they're there to help support them and help talk to them and validate their concerns and really add a part of their care that, again, I think sometimes we don't often are able to fill. And so they're very important. I think, I think at the end of the day, it's just being with people where they're vulnerable, where they're expressing uh, great highs and joys or the lowest lows of despair and, and, and loneliness and sadness. And that's what we're always here for, to, you know, bind up the brokenhearted. And just being able to be present here and to be one person who can help someone toward wholeness or to see these, these young men and women coming off the battlefield, uh, 18, 19 years old, 
and just to be a part of the journey that maybe will take them from this place of, of death and injury into a place of, of life and recovery. So if we can help people learn um, to process, and I don't love that word, but I don't know a better one than process, take action to bind up their broken hearts, to process grief and loss, then we can have more people that are happier, that are more resilient, that are just able to deal with the heartbreak of day-to-day -day life. 